think they should be. This meeting is being recorded. Yeah. Oh, it just said this meeting is being recorded. So it's recorded to the cloud. So you'll be able to find it, right? I think that, that one step, I think it might be number two. I'm not sure. Okay, um, no, I'll find it. Important. I'll find okay. it. Don't worry. All right. <sighs> Okay, reporting in. Okay. <laughs> Obviously not Trish. Uh, but we are recording to the cloud. Hi, Linda. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Todd, <laughs> oh, I lost everybody. Okay, Peggy, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Hey, Belle, good morning. Good morning, good morning, everybody. Hi. I only see four of us. Um, oh, that, that's okay. You, you can go up to the upper right-hand side and yeah, oh, more. look for a different view. Okay. I can't do that because that will yeah. turn, turn the PowerPoint. A place where I can touch up my appearance. Wow, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I don't have to shave. <laughs> Morning, Sonny. Morning. Good to. Oh, look, you're full page. Whoa. How do I get that? Yeah, mine is not doing that. Um, but you do that. Side by side mode is what we had before. And you have to scroll down. I'm on an I Oh, wait a minute. It should be in the upper right hand corner. Your choices for view. Or at the top of the view option. More. More meeting settings. It should be a view and it has different views or view I, options. I don't I, have. I mean, are you on a an iPad or yes? I'm on yeah. an iPad. Hmm. But it might be harder to do that. Oh. With an iPad. I don't know I remember. I've had hundreds of Zoom meetings and I've never had this problem. Huh. Can can every <clears throat> can everybody see the opening slide of the PowerPoint? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. No. That's good. No? Is that the this says Federated Church? Federated yes. Church, yes. Okay. A, yeah. I got it right. Got it. So we're gonna hear a few more bells um signaling that people are coming in, but let's get started. And I want to thank you. Good morning. And thank you for giving up some time on a Saturday morning to, to really talk about leadership at Federated Church. And, and thank you while we're at it for being a church leader. 
Um, we're grateful for all your talents and for your time and for your wisdom. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Rick Bryan. I'm the moderator now of the council. And what we're choosing to do this morning is to talk a little bit about the governance of Federated Church and to kind of go over what that governance is so we all understand our role in the governance. And then to talk a little bit about effective church meetings. And, um, and then we'll answer any questions. We will, in the process, talk a little bit about how we're implementing the strategic plan. Um, and what I hope is that if you, um, you might, you can always interrupt me, but if you want to save some of your questions at the end, then everybody can hear them and we can, we can go forward. Um, so I'd like to start with an opening prayer, if we could. Dear Lord, thank you for this opportunity to gather and to learn together in our roles as le leaders of Federated Church. May we, in this hour, enjoy the spirit of fellowship and inquiry as we gather on this Saturday morning. Guide us in your wisdom and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Um, so let's start at the 60,000 foot level. Um, the United Church of Christ, you could see their motto here, and many of you may know that their national headquarters is here in Cleveland. And what you may not know is that after 20, after 30 years of the national headquarters being on Prospect Avenue, within the last month, they moved. And they have moved now to East 9th Street um, to their new headquarters. And they um, have, they are, as you can see, um, maybe one in that they have a broad sort of doctoral parameters, but they give a lot of freedom particularly to local church autonomy. Now that's important in terms of looking at the purpose of Federated Church um, and understanding the governance of Federated Church. Federated is called Federated because it was the merger of two local congregations that had different denominational backgrounds. In 1919, the Congregational Church of Chagrin Falls and the Disciples of Christ Church began a trial merger that lasted 10 years and finally became official in 1929. So here are neighbors that had been worshiping together for 80 years and were highly respected in Chagrin Falls, and they decided to join together. But there's really a third church you should be aware of, and that's called the Bible Christian Church which was founded uh, in England, organized about 1850 in Chagrin Falls, and it was made up of largely English families, and it was referred to as the English Church. And they built a church on 76 Bell Street. Um, the denomination, however, 11 years later, disbanded, and that local church at 76 Bell Street became part of the Congregational Church, and it was the Congregationalists who uh, enlarged the Bell Street building, relocated from East Orange Street, and so they're the ones that built our clock tower and our spire that we enjoy today. Oops, let's go back, let's go back. Um, these are churches dependent on lay leadership. Um, this is the current slate of the council, the six commissions, and the six standing committees. Although Peggy Jo has already filled up a couple of slots since this was put into my PowerPoint, because she is always working hard to keep things going along. If you were um, at the church annual meeting, you said, you heard me say that federated is like a three-legged stool. And so one leg is um, 
the ministry team of Hamilton, Judy, and shortly will be Peggy Worcester, who is going to be our designated pastor while the uh, associate pastor process is moving on. Another leg is the church staff uh, and all the aspects of the church staff that help us be able to do our ministry teams and do things going forward. And the third leg is the congregation and the council that represents the, the congregation. Um, it is important for all three legs to work together, to be in sync in order for the leadership, uh, in order for the church to be stable. This is probably familiar to many of you. Um, with all due respect, I, I think it was put together by a federal agency. It's, it's fairly, uh, looks fairly complicated, but let's look at the fact that on the left-hand side, the church has about 45 active ministries teams going on, doing the work of the church. They are identified with the six congregational commissions that you see before you, and all of them are in sync with the church council, and then below the church council are the names of the standing committees. The council has 13 voting members, 12 lay leaders, plus the senior pastor. Um, they serve three-year terms. You can only serve two consecutive terms for the same commission or the council. Um, you have six counselors who are assigned to each commission. One counselor is assigned as an administrative counselor, largely assigned to HR and properties. The senior pastor is a voting member of the council. The senior director of operations and people, which is Melissa, is a non-voting member. So at any given time, now right now we are, we are looking, for any of you who want to volunteer, at, for a vice moderator, and we're looking for a treasurer. You can raise your hand right now. Uh, Peggy Jo will record your hand going up if you'd like to be considered. And you, you can get a phone call from her or from me in the next day. Just kidding. Here are the things that um, church council must approve going forward. Um, these are all things that probably don't surprise you. Um, the, the item H might surprise you a little bit about all church related fundraising. Um, that's to avoid any conflicts uh, going forward. Affiliations with other organizations, it is okay to be associated with a faith-based organization or something within our, you know, uh, that, that we're working towards, but we certainly don't want to example, uh, have a big uh, Coca-Cola sign on the church because we affiliated with Coke one day. Um, the congregation needs to prove these, all these five items. Now, at the annual meeting, we suspended the Constitution largely on item number one uh, and number three in order to begin to look at, um, we've suspended them for two years, um, and that um, we will, however, be involved in a congregational vote coming up when the pastoral associate pastoral team recommends a candidate i'm going to guess in may in may of this year maybe june may or june of this year um, so what's the difference between these commissions and the committees the commissions are largely um, focused on the support of the ministry teams the 45 ministry teams that is what we're doing in terms of taking care of the congregation of the community. Um, I would say the key word is serving uh, church life. The standing council committees are responsible for more of the church's business or operation. So there are six church council commissions. 
all of them, um, they, all of them have three-year terms with a maximum of two consecutive terms, although we have suspended that now, as you recall, for two years. Ge Generosity is the probably newest named commission. Um, it is really um, what um, has been very successful this year in helping us have a, a um, stewardship that uh, did very well this year over the last four years. Um, the generosity folks are very proud of that and they should be. Um, we have many of the um, worship teams, uh, ministry teams that are involved largely with congregational care and spiritual formation and mission and service. The, the standing committees Legacy is the endowment of the church. It is um, stands roughly at about seven hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. Property deals with the not only the the church property at eighty six Bell. We own a couple houses on Bell Street. We also still own the Family Life Center, even though it's being managed by the CLC. Uh, in, in a lease arrangement for the next two to three years. Human resources, uh, headed by Bill, um, is in charge of um, evaluations of the pastoral team and other members of the staff. Um, they are very helpful in terms of getting pastoral calls together. The finance, headed by Brady, uh, is in charge of our church budget working with Melissa on that. We, um, it's very important that we have a strong active membership committee and Rose Brown has agreed to come back and help us with membership, thanks to Peggy Jo. Um, and we have an inquirers class that is um, coming at the end of this month. And there are like over 50 invitations that have been sent out for that, for people who are inquiring. So you should feel encouraged by that, that there is interest, particularly after this pandemic, of people coming back and wanting to worship. Um, so what is it to be a commission or committee member? You must be an active member of the church. You must express a commitment to it and understand the purpose of the group that you're in. Um, and may and attend meetings and listen to suggestions. Um, the, this number seven is hard for some people. You get to a meeting, you hear some things, you want to share it. It's hard to maintain confidentiality, but it's also very important to do that. It's particularly important at the council level uh, in case we're debating situations that may affect others within the church. Um, but confidentiality is something that kind of comes within you and has a, an important sense of what you need in terms of working it as a group and working as a church. Um, we hope that you will attend worship services. You need to pledge financial support of the church in order um, to help the church continue to grow and commit adequate time and energy to the church going forward. Now, as you know, in the last year, despite the pandemic, we underwent really two really important uh, exercises that have been very significant for the church. One was the branding exercise that all of you have seen the fruits of that, and that was very well done, and I think very well executed. We hired a consultant, and we were able, and Beth Rutkowski gets a lot of credit for uh, helping to shepherd this. We created a strategic plan for the next three to five years that we're referring to as the VAP, the Visionary Action Plan, and it has five major themes. The first is energized participation. Particularly that's important as we're coming out of this pandemic. 
and bringing people back to the church and bringing people back um, in person to be with each other. I think that one aspect of the pandemic is that we will always have from now on a hybrid church service. There are, you know, at this point, in any given Sunday, almost 60 to 90 people um, by Zoom watching the church service. Some of them are watching from Arizona and Florida, and that's great. Some of them are in the comfort of their home because there's a blizzard going on outside. (laughs) And I think that we're always going to have hybrid uh, a hybrid church service, and we have the a wonderful equipment in the back of the church to be able to provide and really hear the music of the church very strongly and beautifully with our new piano and with the work that Josh does and Marsha does. Um, I think that we need to think about energized participation in terms of encouraging people to be part of ministry teams, to encourage people to be part of the church going forward. Um, We want to kind of fully live our experiences that exist within the church. The second is community engagement, and that's the whole idea of serving others. It It is a tenant of this church. It's an important aspect of the church. Um, We need to think of each other as neighbors in the town of Chagrin Falls and other areas, And there are action steps here to try and do that more than ever. This is, of course, um, a church, and and we have a spiritual life committee that's very active and very involved. But we, we know that many people within our congregation wrestle with spirituality, wrestle, wrestle with questions of it. We're involved in the formation of spiritual learning through our Sunday school classes and and through our junior and senior highs. There are many aspects of the church that involve spiritual deepening, and we want to continue that growth. And and then it's very important that we're involved in congregational care. And the the Congregational Care Committee and the commission um, do wonderful work, and there are many ministries that, that are involved in that but we want to be loving and supporting and caring for all within our congregation. But finally, we need to be, have a sense of financial sustainability. Um, and it, that is sort of, all of you know that church attendance in the last decade has fallen. It's fallen not just at Federated Church, it's fallen all over the country. Um, so has giving in turn. And one of the things that all of us need to face is the the concept or the reality that young families and young children are not attending church the way they were 10 to 15 years ago, or another generation ago. Um, And we, we have wonderful programs for young people when they come to the church. But as we know, um, youth sports, travel teams, NFL football, there's been a lot of demands that have taken people away from the church. And one of our realities is to keep the church sustaining despite that. And it's something that we always have to be aware of and always very involved in. So the strategic plan does that and does that in many different ways that um, are action steps that I think will be very helpful in the next three to five years. So how are we going to implement this this strategic plan? Um, You know, a lot of institutions, nonprofits, simply assign an implementation committee, and those five or six people wrestle with trying to conjole people to do action steps. But largely, the report ends up on a shelf and it looks pretty on the shelf, depending on what binder you put it in. And it looks very nice over there. Um, what I think is important is that the church council owns the implementation of this report for the next three to five years. And I think the only way we can all feel a part of it 
is to own the strategic plan. If all of us as lay leaders of the church understand aspects of the strategic plan, feel ownership in the strategic plan, I think that we can feel a collective ownership in moving the church forward. Now, there are 58 different action steps that are in that strategic plan, that VAP document. And what we have done is to send out or really assign action steps to each one of the six commissions and each of the six committees. Um, and we're encouraging them to partner with other commissions or committees if they want to do that. And in the month of February, commissions and groups met together and they, they chose to concentrate on some action steps and they chose to say, well, maybe those should be part of another committee or we're not interested in pursuing those right now. So what we've done is to take those action steps that each commission or committee wants to work on, and we've revised what we're calling their one sheet, and send it, we're sending it back to the commissions and the committees and say, you work on these for the next year. Let us know how you're doing. Let us feel how empowered you are on that. And all the other action steps, um, and there's about 30 of them, we've put over in what we're calling the VAP parking lot. And they're gonna stay in the VAP parking lot until the end of this year when we kind of revise, look back on the parking lot and begin to reassign action steps to various groups. Um, does anybody right now want to, let's stop here. Does anybody want to talk about the church governance or does anybody want to talk about the strategic plan or, or ask any questions about it. So the way to do that is you're going to have to unmute your microphone and speak. Uh, Rick, Bill Franz, quick question. Hi, Bill. Uh, good morning. Um, what jumped out at you when you got your responses? From the, from the different folks a few weeks back, <clears throat> what jumped out at you um, in those responses? You know, Bill, I think the thing that, that um, jumped out to me was the whole question of membership. I think that, um, I think most of us right now are seeing membership in terms of a, a staff staff driven situation. And I think it's very important in this inquiry class going forward at the end of the month that, you know, Hamilton's involved and, and Judy is involved. And I think it's very important to have your ministry team there involved in the, for, for the new inquirers. But I also think that there's a, a, a really significant role for lay people and lay leaders in membership. I think it's important that we use our gifts in order to welcome people in terms of a meal or, um, you know, be, being generous in our hospitality. But I think it's also people who are inquiring to a church want to meet other people and hear about their journey on why they joined a church and what it is in the church that's so important to them. So we have a, a, a membership committee that's only got one person on it at the moment. And I think we need to talk among all of us here and identify some other people who could be helpful in membership and, and really um, perhaps show up at that inquirer's class ourselves and make some people feel welcome. So if you look at a lot of the parked, what, what I would call the parked action steps, a lot of them will go around this concept of of membership. Thanks. Thanks. Rick, uh, this is Sunny speaking. Um, hi, Sunny. Hi. Will we have um, access to the parked? Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you, you'll get it. You'll get a copy of the parking lot as soon as I finish kind of working through what mm -hmm. everybody wants 
wants to sign off on yeah this is this is what they're working on now and then right. we i will sort of um i need to clean up the parking lot i just i kind of as you can imagine just kind of dump them <laughs> good for over you there. and they need to <laughs> we need to kind of clean that up a little bit but yeah we will share that with with all the commissions and the committees so you're aware of it and then um probably at the end of the year um we will begin to pluck some items out and see where it would best fit. Um, I think, Sonny, this leads to a, a interesting point, which is if the council is going to own the action steps for the governance, um, I think it's going to be important in the next six to seven months of council meetings that we feature maybe a commission or a committee in a council meeting and have not only the counselor but the chair of the committee or maybe other people so the people who want to join the commission or committee join the council meeting and talk a little bit about some of the main things you're wrestling with or some of the problems you've encountered in your discussions and i think it's very important to encourage from this process a healthier <laughs> dialogue between the council and the commissions and committees than perhaps has taken place in the last two or three years. And I, that's one of my goals in doing this. And I, I hope that makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. It does. Marin. Hi, Rick. Um, you had mentioned that some of these um, action steps might be something that we would collaborate with other commissions or committees. On, um, will uh, as those have been assigned, have they been assigned with an asterisk that says which other commissions or committees uh, are also interested in that work, or do we uh, begin that thinking? Of that? No, you know it's interesting when a lot of people, uh, there were a lot of uh, commissions and committees that said, yeah, maybe we should be working with like telling our story on this or maybe we should be working with congregational care on this and that's you know going back to sunny's question here that's why i need to go back to the parking lot <laughs> and clean that up a little bit and figure out where some sharing possibilities are and then get those two groups together um the other thing i'm doing is is resurrecting and it's going to happen tomorrow morning a meeting of and it'll probably happen every two or three months, a meeting between the chairs of the commissions and the committees um, with the idea of um, really hearing their questions about this going forward and seeing if there's a way we can have some joint ownership of some things. Who else has a question? Uh, I do. Hi. Hi, uh, it's Linda. Um, I'm just, I wanted to clarify um, the page that you sent to us, uh, the action steps, the applicable VAP action steps. And yep. I'm kind of confused as to what these refer to as far as the numbers that you gave them, like D3.2, uh, A2.4. And some of them don't seem to uh, align with what I sent in from mission and service and our comments on the questionnaire from you know a few weeks ago so right so just linda, what that... what, linda what i did was to uh -huh. um take the five areas of the strategic plan mm -hmm. that we just did and i i assigned them a b c d e okay and then i took each each area had one or two main goals or three goals and uh -huh. then action steps under it. And that's how I came up with this sort of my own numbering system is a way okay. to remember it. All so right. that you don't have to worry about that at all. Okay. It I was, was just, just confused. <laughs> no, well, it was a way for us to keep track of it in a way okay. that we could reference it quicker. Okay. Um, and I, I have sent back I, as part of the meeting tomorrow, you will see I've sent back what I think is the right 
action steps that you've agreed on with your commission. Um, And one of the things we're going to do tomorrow at tomorrow's meeting is go through those and make sure that we're all in agreement on it so that we can go forward. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We ready to move forward? Um, Uh, I have one more. Okay, Linda. To share. Um, I think this is the appropriate venue to mention this. I received an email from a church member who was concerned with some of the things that were written in the spire from SJAM. And um, uh, what did she say? Uh, There's some serious concerns about what they printed. And then I said, well, I read it through again. And I thought it must be the cut funding for ice and border patrol. And she said, yes. And her comment that was that um, her major concern is bringing the politics into the church, particularly the signing of petitions and letters to political leaders. There is a reason for separation of church and state. In addition to the bully pulpit concept, we wonder if we are compromising our tax exempt status. So that concern is out there. So I think this is the venue to let people know about that. Linda, I would suggest that we talk about that tomorrow. Okay. All right. Um, I, I don't think that, I think it'd be smart to just, we have a short time here to go through the rest oh. of this of this here and let us talk about that tomorrow All right. when the commissions and committees are together and we can have a little bit of a dialogue about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, oops. Okay. Yeah, um, I had just a question maybe um, bringing the policy book because we have a policy on petitions and it would be helpful. We can do that tomorrow. Yes, thank you. Okay, so we're all involved in church meetings. And um, so what we did in the nominating and leadership group was to revise the ingredients of effective church meetings it was, I believe, written Sunny or Peggy in 2005, and we revised it. And so this is what we're working on here at the moment. These are ground rules that we put together um, that we hope all of you will embrace and practice going forward. And um, some of this is um, sort of rules that we've all been operating under. Some of this, um, there's a lot on this side. Um, I'd like to see meetings generally not last longer than an hour. Um, I've been involved in a few church meetings that have gone for two and a half hours. And I have to say two and a half hours by Zoom is is rugged (laughs) by by any stretch of the imagination. So I'd like to generally suggest all of you that you try and work on one hour meetings, that you start and end them on time. But I think it's very important that prayers should open and close each meeting. I think that spiritual, I'm going to talk about the spiritual component in a minute, but I think that that is, is, should be a ground rule. Um, I think the other ground rules should be civility and And another important word here is confidentiality. I think people need to feel safe in meetings. I think that they have, they feel that nobody should dominate a meeting and that some of who, some of us who like to talk should listen more and we should encourage the quiet ones to contribute to talk. Um, And then finally, I think it's very important that we, we agree that once a decision is reached, even though it might not be unanimous and others may still be upset that this sort of recommendation was reached, that we all accept it as a group until it's revisited. Um, Here's an example of a scripture to open a meeting. It's from 1 Corinthians. And um, you you can read... um, from 1 Corinthians, the 12th verse, and then a good way to sort of 
break the ice or get a, a feeling of the group is what part, part of the body are you? And then go into silence and wait for somebody to talk. Anybody want to take their hand at this? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> See if that spurs on some conversation. I, I, well, part of the body for me is my eyes. I, I learn by, um, by vision. I'm a visual learner. Um, maybe that's because I wear hearing aids and I don't hear as well. So, you know, that's out. And I've never been able to have a good sense of smell. So I learn by viewing. And that's why at Federated, it is so welcoming to me to have um, the words of a hymn printed up on the wall that I could, I'm not got my head buried in a book in a hymnal. I love hymnals, but I can project out. I can read the verses on, on the wall. And therefore, it allows me a great, a much more of a spiritual connection within the service to have those visual clues for me at Federated. Some of you might be hearing your ears in terms of the music or hearing the word spoken. You know, that that is equally that some of you may it may resonate in your heart that that is your heart is part of um, your body that you you really have feelings and what you feel for so i'm just suggesting that that uh, one of the ways to open a meeting is is and get some participation by everybody is use this and and just sit back as a leader and listen it might take a while, but see what comes forward. There are really three components of a church meeting. The first is the spiritual, and, and that's why we, we talk about opening and closing with prayer. But it's also very important to make sure everybody knows everybody in a meeting, and particularly to introduce any new members or maybe guests that are coming to sit in on your meeting, because welcoming is a very important part of what we do. I think one of the reasons, uh, I think people expect a spiritual component in a church meeting. I, I think that's what differentiates from meetings with, you might have with a board meeting with the Red Cross or something like that. At, at Federated, you're coming and you want a spiritual component in fellowship with the other people you're with. Another aspect is that sometimes people, sometimes in your meetings, you have to explain things or educate things. So this, this represents the educational component. And you may be introducing something in your meeting that not everybody knows about, or it's a new concept, or it's a new idea. And as a leader, you may need to educate everybody as to what this is about, how it fits in, what are the components of it in order for them to understand it? And then finally, we have in our meetings tasks. We have things that need to get done. We need things that need to get voted on. Um, and don't overlook that, particularly as you're, you know, you've got, a, you've got an hour and it may take a long time. It may take some time for your spiritual aspect and then for learning. Don't try and rush the tasks at the end or people will feel rushed and won't want to agree going forward. And then sometimes you may run out of time and you may have to always have in mind your clock as you're going forward in your meeting in order that you can accomplish all three aspects of this meeting. These are examples um, to close a meeting. And... Um, I just wondered if, if, um, 
you look at these, these are, um, I, I actually like the last one of the three um, because I think it, it gets into the, the issue of fellowship and that I love the, the about two or three gathered together in your name. Um, I've always felt very comforted by that. And so I think that's a great way often to end a meeting. Um, does anybody else want to comment on either one of these three? It's I think all. we all could. Yep, yeah, again, the, the, I think if we uh, come to uh, some of these meetings, you know, it depends on what happened in your day, what happened in the news, what happened in your, uh, you know, with your kids. Uh, and, and so you might come at these, um, uh, might come at these a little more emotionally charged some days and some other days you might want to come more set back and uh, listening and uh, it's it probably, I mean, <clears throat> being that we're all very human, uh, it's going to move around, it's going to change. And, and uh, I don't want to assume that someone who is um, more <laughs> analytical and scientific is always going to be that way. So, you know, sitting back and trying to understand where somebody's coming from or asking a question or two about where they're coming from is, I think, uh, tantamount to success. I think that's a good point. Anybody else? Okay, so we're at the end of our our formal, the two things we wanted to really go over in this PowerPoint. We've talked about the governance. We've kind of gotten into detail about the commissions and the committees. We have talked about the strategic plan and how we're planning to implement it. And then we just had a nice little overview of church meetings and what's involved. And I wondered if anybody had any questions or final thoughts before we conclude. See, we're concluding before the hour. See, <laughs> we, we, we're in 45 minutes. You're going, oh my gosh, I have 15 more minutes. What are we going to do here? It's okay to end a meeting early. Okay. It's okay to give you back your Saturday morning. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 Rick, bef before we, we leave, I just have a quick question. This is Todd. Um, Hi, Todd. So, so the, the VAP lists that we got in the meeting invites are not the final ones, right? Um, those, are, those are the original ones that we discussed in our meetings in February. Right. And there's, yeah. been some, there's been some winnowing, I guess, of those down to a, a smaller list. And we're, we're still waiting for the smaller list, right? No, the smaller list is in your invitation for tomorrow's meeting because you're part of tomorrow's meeting because you're the chair of telling oh, okay. our story. So that's in your group, in your list tomorrow. Okay. okay. Some of you get to have two days in a row of meetings. It's very exciting. <laughs> some of you don't. I you, those, I, of you who, I, those of you who yeah. don't have a meeting tomorrow say, wow, I can just go to worship and that's all I need to do. That's good. Yeah. Pat ah, yourselves okay. in the back and, you know, but I, some I of guess you, what I did, I took, I took all, all the documents from both meetings and put them in the same folder. So I, uh -huh. I lost track of which one went with which meeting. So yeah, you're going to have to sort, you're going to have to go into a sort. Okay. <laughs> and Rick, uh, Rick, can you hear me, Alexandra? Yeah. Just, just to be yes, hi Rick. Just to hi, be Alex. sure that you you looked in. Hey, hi. <laughs> that sure that you look in the in the chat. Maybe we need to assess what was written there. Okay. Um, I some comments oh, yes. were done in the chat. Just, just to be sure that you saw saw that. Yes, I will make sure I look at the chat here on membership and the parking lot and s jam and yes i would thank you thank you for pointing that out to me 
I did capture the chat for you, Rick, and I was going to make sure that you get it. Okay. Thank you. At least I think I have. I've tried. I did a screenshot of it just in case. Okay. So let's join our heads, bow down in a closing prayer. Thank you for this time of fellowship and learning. Grant that this knowledge will guide us in the weeks and months ahead as we serve the people of the Congregation of Federated Church in our various key roles. We ask that you bless each of us for the remainder of this day in health and spirit. Amen. 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 Thank you all. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Rick. See you, Rick. See you. See you down the road. See you, you at your church. <laughs> See you in the parking lot. Right. And there you go. <laughs> Take care. <laughs> Bye. Alexander, are you Rick? Yes. There are. There is a. There is a. A couple. Just to be sure. Yeah, just to be sure before leaving. Go ahead, Alexander. Ask him your question. Yeah. So, 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 Rick, tomorrow only the chairs, right? No concealers of those chairs, only the chairs for that meeting. Just to be sure before, uh, it's only you, the chairs, right? You are not part of that meeting tomorrow. Okay. Thank you, Rick. Just to be sure. You, you're Just welcome. To be sure. You're welcome. Perfect. Yes, yeah, thank you. Bye-bye.